Dear Lord, please take the pain away. Have you ever personally felt struggle that deep? You are begging the Lord to please make the hurt stop. Or maybe you have a fellow Christian who you know has, has struggled mightily with some physical disability or discomfort or illness. And you know that they have prayed to the Lord, Dear Lord, please take the pain away. The Apostle Paul prayed that prayer, Dear Lord, please take the pain away. And, and the Lord said no. And it's so important for us to understand exactly what was happening in that moment when the Lord said no, so that we can step back and consider our own pains or those of our fellow Christians who we want to support so that we have the right words, so that we have the right perspective, so that we can truly, as Paul did, rejoice in his suffering. Now, to understand Paul's pain, one needs to understand the backstory. God had richly blessed Paul. He had given him some special revelations. And these kinds of revelations were of the sort that Paul could have become proud Paul could have become very full of himself, how special he was. And so Paul explains that there was given to him a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to beat him up in order that he might not think too much of himself. Now, it feels a little confusing, doesn't it, that a messenger of Satan could also be something that God gave so that he would not be proud. How do God and Satan work together or in how are they involved in the same basic pain that Paul is feeling? And perhaps the best example we can think about is Job. We know that Job was a man who had been blessed by, the God, by God with trust in him. And the Lord shows off Job. He shows off this faith. And the devil says, well, the only reason he loves you is because you've blessed him so much. And the Lord said, that's not, the Lord knew that wasn't true. But he said, go ahead, let's you try it take away and so the devil did right the devil brought difficulty in the life of job and now we need to understand also here that god never wanted there to be pain for anyone when he created the world it was a perfect place pain came into the world because of humanity's sin and so at a certain foundational level god does not want there to be pain but now that there is sin in the world we recognize that pain can come and even God can permit or allow or even send pain for his good purposes. So with Job, the purpose was to show the devil that he was wrong about his analysis of Job's love for God. It was not based on simply the fact that Job was rich. Job lost everything and by God's grace, he still expressed his love for God. So with the Apostle Paul, things had been going very, very well, amazing revelations. And God knew that pride could be eternally destructive for Paul. And so what did God do? A thorn in the flesh was given to Paul so that he would not be proud. And Paul prayed, dear Lord, please take this pain away. And the Lord replied, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, I don't know for sure the cause, God's divine plan behind every pain that a Christian experiences. Could it be that there is pride that the Lord is wishing to extinguish? It certainly can happen. We know from Hebrews chapter 12 that the Lord disciplines those he loves. There are so many things, so many reasons there can be behind the scenes that we never find out about, like God wanting to show the devil that the faith Job had was authentic. So we don't know all the reasons. But what we can be sure of is that it's wrong if we assume that pain means that we're losing. Paul pleaded for the pain to be gone. And God said, I'm actually bringing a blessing into your life through your pain. In fact, one of the greatest blessings when we recognize our weakness, when we are weak, then we are strong. That is, God's grace is sufficient for us. His power arrives at its goal in weakness. 
When we are weak, then we see how, in truth, we depend on God for everything. His power reaches its goal when we are weak. We, we so clearly see that we depend on him, that he is gracious, that he is loving, that he is strong, and that in his strength, we can rejoice. Now, of course, we would want to rejoice in his strength all the time. And we might wish that we wouldn't have the weakness that would require God to bring difficulty into our lives to remind us of how much we depend on him. We might wish that we were not sinful. The day will come when we will not be sinful. But for now, as we struggle with a sinful flesh, are there times when difficulty is precisely the way that God, that God puts the spotlight on his power, that we depend on him? Absolutely. Know that you too can rejoice in the midst of your sufferings.